Okay, hello, this is Dr. James, and today I was going to try to look for some light sources to do some uh, absorption spectroscopy. And I have my, uh, oh, here we go, my, oops, I'm going to pull the computer off, my Thunder Optics spectrometer. I did a video on that, it's a very uh, inexpensive visible light spectrometer. And um, I was looking for something that can uh, generate radiation pretty much in a full uh, white spectrum. And uh, I happen to have this LED flashlight around, but I suspected it would probably not generate the proper spectrum because a lot of times these LEDs, they, they make light in a different way. Like, let's compare it to, uh, oh, I have my heat lamp back here. And that's an incandescent light source. And incandescent uh, basically generates a very broad spectrum of uh, radi light radiation, where the LED uh, typically uses semiconductors to generate specific light frequencies to fool your eyes and make you think you're seeing white light when you're really not. So, oh, uh, let's see, we got that. Okay, so here's our flashlight. So let's take a look at these two sources on our spectrometer and see what the difference is. Okay, that should be interesting. Okay, I turned off the lights so that the uh, light above is not interfering with uh, my spectrum. And so let's take our LED flashlight here and we'll put the light into our spectrometer and we'll look at the spectrum here. And as I suspected, there's actually three peaks generated by this light. Okay, so it's not actually a continuous spectrum. So, and it doesn't have very much energy down in the infrared. Okay, look at that. Okay, so let's uh, turn on our heat lamp now. And we will take a look at the spectrum from that. Come on, where's the switch? Okay, yeah, that thing is super bright. And even from a distance, you can see that there's a strong spectrum in the infrared here. And I'll just point the uh, spectrometer at the heat lamp. Okay. And let's take a look here. Depending on how I pointed it, I think it's becoming saturated at certain points. But it definitely has a very strong spectrum in the infrared here. Look at that. Very strong spectrum. I'm going to point, point it more at the light. Looks like it has got a very broad spectrum, which is what you more like what you'd expect from an incandescent light. Okay. And so I think we may have to use this one to uh, do our absorption spectroscopy or something like it. I was trying to get a flashlight working or something, but uh, it's corroded to shut. I can't seem to get it open. Let's take a look here. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder where that peak is coming from. Okay. This, this flashlight has an incandescent light bulb in it, but I cannot get it. It's like an aluminum, nice aluminum case, and it's been sitting for a while, and it's corroded. I can't even get it open, and the thing doesn't work, of course, and these new batteries. Anyway, so we'll be doing some interesting absorption spectroscopy experiments, I think, soon. And uh, we'll be looking at some other spectroscopy or light sources with spec spec uh, or spectrometer here. Anyway, very okay. So while we're looking at the spectrum, let's just try one other source. I'm going to try using a lighter. Let me let me turn off this light. Okay, and there we go. There is the spectrum of the lighter. Definitely a lot of infrared there. Very infrared thermal spectrum. Okay. And uh, actually, well, we do have this light on. Let me, here's another LED light. It's on my camera phone. And we'll just take a look at that spectrum. And that one, again, is very, you know, it's made out of discrete 
antique type of uh, different colors. It's not a continuous spectrum and it's very, you know, it doesn't have very much heat to it. The infrared part down on the left hand side is very low. You can see there's the, the light, the white light is not actually truly white, but it's about three different colors mixed together, simulated in the LED. Okay. Oh, very cool. Okay, so I was able to get the batteries in this thing. It was not easy. And it looks like it is working. So let's take a look at the spectrum of this guy. Okay. I'll get the light on here. Okay. And we'll shine that in there. And it looks like, again, it has a very broadband spectrum. So I think this might actually be good for absorption spectroscopy. It might be better than uh, using that heat lamp because I'll probably catch something on fire with that. Okay, so there we go. So I got a lot of light energy in the infrared all the way across the spectrum, the visible everything. Okay, very cool, huh? Okay. So there is, uh, this is also an old time incandescent light bulb. I think it's getting harder to find these now. Anyway, so we'll be doing some interesting spectroscopy soon. Okay, anyway, this is uh, Dr. James, and thanks for watching.